Hello, my friends. Those of you who are regulars, thank you for your patience waiting. It's been about three weeks since I last released a video. I try and do one a week, but I've been quite unwell, but I'm back fighting fit. Now, speaking of fighting, I've got a war-themed watch today. It's not actually a watch that's seen any action. It's a special edition in association with the Imperial War Museum. But before I bore you to death with any of that, because not everyone's into museums and war, I need to just basically tell you, I have a few major criticisms of this watch. And the first one I'm going to highlight is how long the name is. So if someone says, I like the look of your brand new AV8 watch, you can say, yes, I'm wearing the, I've got, I had to write this down, it's so long. It's the AV8 Hawker Hurricane Carey Jewel Time Imperial War Museum's edition, Kensington. That is a mouthful. So is this very long-windedly named watch any good? That's what I'm here to tell you about. I like to have variety on this channel. I don't always like to give glowing reviews. Unfortunately today, this is not a glowing review. Let's have a look and see why. But first, Dan, let's tell them the stats and specs, shall we? Yes, go on, tell them. Yes, stats and specs. Well, I've given you the very long-winded name, which is going to take up a third of this video. The next thing is the price. US dollars, 252. So it's uh, in the affordable realm, if you will. What you've got in here is a Japanese quartz movement. They say it's a chronograph. They're actually wrong. Case size is 43 and a half millimeters from here to here, excluding these pushers. 12 mil thick, including this single dome mineral crystal, Ugh, mineral, no, please no, um, with blue AR coating. The length of the watch is 50 millimeters, 22 millimeter lugs here, so strap changes are quite nice and easy. 22 is a common size. No quick release on here, which I would expect, but anyway, push pull crown, not screw down, hence the woefully pathetic 50 meters water resistance. The weight, including this leather strap, which is the only option available for this edition, is 100 grams. There are four variations. They all have extraordinarily long names. They all have very different aesthetic, but they still look like pilot watches, of course, but they have different color schemes and different names. So Dan, what are your nitpicks? Because it uh, sounds like you've got a lot to get off your chest. Go on, tell them, mate. Yeah. This is where we're going to get stuck into my immediate criticisms. Hawker Hurricane. Here's a picture. Look at the look at the color of it. Look at the color scheme, if you will. What do you notice different? This is meant to be inspired by the Hawker Hurricane, a plane which they would like to display at the Imperial War Museum, a beautiful set of buildings in the UK, which show loads of war artifacts and equipment, and machinery. This is obviously in partnership with them. They should know their stuff, shouldn't they, yeah? Hawker Hurricane does not have orange and black on it. I'm trying to find the connection to the aesthetic of this watch and how it pays tribute to that beautiful Hawker Hurricane aeroplane. Please, somebody help me, am I being thick? Some nerd out there's gonna know, what is this orange and sandy textured stippled effect dial and dual time movement got anything to do with the Hawker Hurricane? Please correct me and I'll pin your comment to the top and hold my hands up and say, I'm an idiot, because I can't find anything. So that's my first rant. The second one, which is the biggest of all, which is a game changer, it's the thing, the reason why I have barely worn this watch and it annoys me to the point where I can't even look at it sometimes. Two. 24 hour subdials. It's bad enough in a chronograph watch, which this isn't by the way, having that 24 hour subdial here normally on a lot of watch movements. I don't care about knowing if it's part of the day it is. I know if it's morning or evening. I think it's pointless having that. And you know what's even more pointless? There's another one. And this one you can adjust separate to the main one. So this one on the left here, this is where I had my mind frazzled, is these pushers are not for timing anything. Therefore in ultra slow motion changing that dial there. So you see I press the top one, the, it goes back in time, slowly. I press this one down here, very slowly, as you can see, it goes forward. Let's press it again. Uh, there we go, it's creeping forward. I can't, it's such a tiny dial and there's not enough increments of markers there to see what this is actually saying. I think it's so pointless, it's annoying. And this ticking hand here is just ticking away and it's just always ticking away. It's no timing equipment on here at all. I just don't get it. I just don't get the relevance of having a dual time watch uh, that looks like a chronograph. I think it's a massive fail. Then the other criticisms are quite minor, but still annoying at this price point. Mineral crystal, come on, at 250 bucks, you could easily put sapphire in there. Or why not go acrylic and go old school and have something with some charm about it? I think it's a bit niche having a connection with the Imperial War Museum if they reach into a global market. Imperial War Museums, there's only a few of them and not everyone's heard of them. What is the point? I know it's nice to share that celebration with a place which shows all these wonderful artifacts and celebrating the incredible efforts these heroes have put in to all these wars. 
but get the theme of the watches better. That's gonna show more honor to these wonderful people by doing a watch which actually looks like something that's been plucked out of a binnacle or an instrument display from one of these aeroplanes. Not just something with some lazy design. Sorry, lazy. And the next thing is the loom is pretty shockingly bad. If it's a pilot watch, I want this to glow like a torch. It looks okay now, but the hands are already, as you can see, weaker than the rest of it, and it lasts about five minutes. So it's shit. Just tell them what you like, Dan. Come on, surely it can't be that shit. I think it looks gorgeous. It's a well-made watch. The beautiful textured dial, these raised indices and markers here, looks lovely. Neatly framed date window at the six with the lovely black date window there. Lovely looking watch. I think if you don't care about the 24 hour feature, this contrasting silver sub dials really help it pop. It's got some symmetry. Dual time here in this little plaque down here. And I love these screws that sort of hold that miniature plate down. That looks very military-esque, like it's been bolted together, this watch. And then these four screws around each of these subdials look great. I love the aeroplane around this orange seconds hand ticking away there. The seconds hand seems to line up very nicely, which is good. You don't always get that on a quartz movement. I think it's a nice size and a weight. Looks very handsome. It's comfortable, it's only 100 grams. And I think the brand AV8 is good. I think if you wanted just a fashion watch, which is you know, reasonably inexpensive, but try not to look at other competitors uh, from China too much because you'll have your socks blown off. And you could just appreciate this watch for the aesthetics, the build quality, and things like that. So overall, it's a good watch, but also a bad one. Would I recommend it? Well, if you like the looks and you don't mind the uh, the flaws I've highlighted, yeah, go and get one, treat yourself. But Aviate have got so many watches, it's almost overwhelming. You will definitely find another one, which will blow your socks off, probably more than this one. But if you're really into collecting special editions and you have a strong connection to the Imperial War Museum, this is a definite must buy. Appreciate Aviate sending me this watch, but this is an example of, I don't always give glowing reviews and I've given my reasons to why I'm unhappy. That's why I'm a watch reviewer. I can't just say every watch in the world is amazing and you should go and buy one because that's very much not true. But you know what I don't ask enough for you guys to do? is subscribe because for some reason I get lots of views but not enough of you are subscribing so there's a small percentage of you committing to pressing a button which is free so if you could do that wonderful thing it helps the channel grow helps me have more presence on YouTube thanks for watching me guys I'll see you in the next one bye for now